Hello, my name is Dejan Boschkov, Grandmaster from Bulgaria. Attacking the king in the center is one of the main plans that we have in a game of chess. It is usually happening in the so-called open games after e4, e5, and then say knight f3, knight c6. There is a tendency that one of the kings remains in the center, and this king can be easily attacked, like for example in the Scotch game. These files can get easily opened, and one of the kings can get under the attack very, very fast. Of course, in order to have successful attack, you have to have lead in the development, and you need to be the first one to occupy the central files with your heavy pieces, usually the rooks, and the queen. Very often the bishops are helping, creating various pins, and obviously the opponent's king needs to remain in the center. The open games are not the only source of concern, the king might remain in the middle of the board for various reasons in some other situations as well. The game that I chose for you to illustrate my point of view is the game Sadi Panchada with the white pieces against Himanshu, played in New Delhi 2006. Everything started with the Rosalimo Sicilian and then after g6 short castle bishop g7. White chose the slightly unusual move h3. We're skipping quickly the opening phase. e5 was played here, the knight jumped on d5. Rook e1 and black tried to put as much pressure to his opponent as he could before he castled. Of course, safer was to castle in this situation. This is something that I will advise you to castle as quick as possible. And this is an advice that Capablanca gave once to everyone that he knew, his students, his teammates in the Cuban team. Here after knight c3, black can go knight c7, and he has quite a stable position. But black obviously wanted to somehow force white into concession. He perhaps thought that white will be forced to defend himself with a move like queen to e2, but instead of this, white bravely sacrificed the pawn with a move knight to c3. After knight c3, he took in this direction. Now he gets double pawns, this is true, and these two pawns might be very very weak in an endgame, but in return, he is getting this open diagonal for his bishop, and he is getting an open file for his queen. It was Paul Morphy, the famous American Grandmaster. There were no Grandmasters, but the best player of the world at that time in the 1850s, who formulated three typical principles, which you can follow easily if you want to create a central attack. Those are develop your pieces, number one. Number two, seize the center, these four squares in the middle of the board. And number three, open files. Whenever you open files, the big difference between the activity of your pieces and the activity of the opponent's pieces is going to become more and more obvious. So here was the last chance maybe for black to castle short. He could have done it immediately after a move like e6 and after bishop c6, queen c6, nobody can stop him from castling, but I guess he was a little bit afraid here that white is going to play a move like queen d2 followed by bishop h6, trade his bishops and try to attack him on the king's side. And he also wanted to follow up his plan and he bravely took the pawn on e5. Brave is not necessarily strong. After knight e5, bishop e5 and queen d5, this strong central move we already see as some of the good things that white has built in the last few moves. The queen and the rook, they are on the open files and they are helping white seize the center. These four squares are under his control. And it would be very, very difficult for black to castle right now. For example, if he tries to defend his bishop with a move like f6, there is simply bishop h6 and the king is tapped from castling on the short side. Likewise, if bishop to f6 in this situation, there will be the move bishop h6, once again, not letting him to escape in. Even the move bishop d6, which was actually played in the game, was answered in the same way bishop h6. Priority for you is to not let this king escape on either of the sides of the board. And here we see one of the main differences between white's and black setup. Black basically cannot use his rooks. They are stuck because his king is in the middle. They are useless, they have no open files, while in return, in comparison to that, just have a look at the white rooks, they have two half open files and on those half open files they are ready to break into the opponent's camp 
and to start creating very, very powerful threats, mating threats, actually. So here, black played them of a6, trying to get rid of this bishop. Why is this bishop so important? Well, this can be demonstrated with the line e6, trying to get rid of the queen, to which this bishop can help white with the spin, and white is ready to break open, he is ready to sacrifice a rook, but to open further that file, take on e6 with the queen, with two possible lines. If the king escapes on d8, that's easy. Bishop g5 is going to lead to checkmate on the next move. And if the bishop blocks the check with bishop e7, this is where we see the difference in the two situations. This rook can easily come and help the attack, while well, these two, they are still sleeping on e8 and on h8. The threat is checkmate, and black cannot push the d-pawn because of the pin. He has to go queen to d8, to which queen to f6, give me the rook. That's the fastest way of making use of the other pin on the e-file, and after bishop g5, black is helpless. Even though he's upper rook, basically he's playing without these two pieces, and even the rook cannot help, so therefore he is losing the bishop on e7, and he is getting checkmated. That's why a6, he's trying to get rid of the spin, but the bishop can uh, stay on the diagonal, and this is where it stayed, with bishop to a4. Now b5 is impossible because the rook on a8 is hanging, and black is trying another thing to get rid of this bishop. He went rook to b8, breaking the pin, intending b5 and c4 to trap this bishop, but this appeared to be too slow. Probably the best defense in this situation was to go king to d8. This is, however, very counterintuitive. And on the top of that, white is going to have advantage after queen takes f7. He is regaining the pawn and he continues the attack. Or even better, rook d1, bring one more piece into the attack. And after rook e8, then do bishop to b3. Bring this bishop also where it belongs, to by the diagonal on f6. White can go back with the queen. Now the idea is bishop f7, trapping the rook. All of a sudden, this rook has nowhere to go. And if black pushes something, this will make things even worse. While with bishop f4, there is bishop g7, and now on the top of the thread bishop f7, sometimes a white is threatening to take on f6. And definitely, black is on the ropes, he is just going to lose material pretty much for nothing. But why can't black break the pin indeed with the move rook b8 actually there is another move rook to a7 in this situation to break the pin and to prepare the move b5 and c4 however here it will be very similar to what we are about to see white is ready to follow morphe's third principle open files and that's the way to do it he is ready to sacrifice rook number one to open a file for his brother rook number two which is going to come on the file after that if king takes on e7, it's quick mate, rook e1. The diagonals has been opened as well. It's not only about the files, but diagonals are opened, and this is just checkmate. Or bishop to d6, you can win the queen, you can do whatever you like in situations like that. Everything is going to lead to checkmate. If instead of capturing on e7 with the king, black captures with the bishop, this is where we see rook number two coming, and this is Again, the power of the good connection and good communication between the white pieces. Now, there will be very soon threat against this bishop on e7. And black can try to defend it in advance with the move like queen d8, but then he is leaving the e5 square available for the queen. The queen is attacking on h8. Rook has to run. Bishop g5. And once more, just like before, the bishop on e7 cannot be defended. Which means that after bishop takes e7, Black is getting checkmated on the dark squares. Say if he goes d6, just check, and on king d7, the simplest is bishop c5. One threat is rook d1 check to win the queen, another threat is to take the rook on a7, and black is completely helpless. Plus, white already has a bishop and two pawns for the rook, so basically he is attacking for free. This is if he goes queen d8. If he does something like b5, intending once again to block this bishop and to enable the movement of that pawn, which will open the road for his pieces to defend on e7, he will be once again uh, short as white can destroy this defender on e7 as well. 
that's a very beautiful way of attacking. We are constantly opening files, more files and more diagonals for our pieces and the remaining soldiers are finally delivering checkmate to the opponent's king. Don't forget though to invite all of them into the party. Right now, king has three squares where to go. f6, d6 and d8. d8 is going to lead to the same old mate that we have seen before, so that's not an option. D6 is actually even faster made than before because the united efforts of these two pieces are taking pretty much everything from black. And after king f6, this is the best defense. It seems for a moment that black can survive this. However, if you have listened to me carefully, remember that we need to invite everybody to the party. Right now, the queen is there, bishop is there, they are perfect. But we need somebody to deliver the checkmate, right? And who is that? That little soldier, the G pawn. The threat is G5 checkmate. Any check can be checkmate once the king comes in front of his pawns and he lacks defenders. If now G5 is a defensive idea, then white is going to take this pawn with checks. And then he is going to bring the king back on F6 to finally checkmate it with the move G5. And that's a very nice line. We see that the king alone can do nothing to survive. And if the king tries to get some support with the queen on e5, this is indeed the best defense, but now the queen has too many duties. We can deflect the king and then take the queen, then take the pawn on c5. We are threatening the rook, we are threatening the bishop. We continue the attack with material advantage of, say, rook e8 and bishop to b3 with the obvious threat here and there. Or queen d5, give me checkmate, give me the rook, and even bishop takes a 7 is a threat followed by queen d5 and white is completely winning. Actually, something pretty similar happened in the game because black played rook b8 and this time it's easy for us. We have seen the pattern. We want to open the files, a follow Morpheus principle number three and here we go. Rook takes e7, opening the road for the second rook. If the king takes then we know rook e1 followed by bishop g5 is going to be the same old checkmate. While if the bishop takes rook e1 again. Now, some more defenses that we didn't mention. Queen d8 and queen e5 is familiar, and here it is even worse for black because besides this rook, that one is also hanging. Not that we are going to take the one on b8, we are still going to play bishop g5, take on e7, and deliver checkmate on the dark squares, but still, it's pleasant to have one more piece under attack. If Black tries to defend with a move like rook f8. This idea of rook sacrifice on e7 still works, followed by this check. And now if the king goes on d8, we don't have bishop g5 checkmate like before because of f6, but we can grab the rook. Now we are threatening queen e7 checkmate. If the queen comes to a5, we have simply bishop d6. And this is going to checkmate after that on e7. The king has no way out. While if the queen comes on b6, now they have control of that square, but we can do check and check. And if this is, it's checkmate like that, checkmate in two. While if they don't go d6, if they come back, then c7 square has been covered and we are delivering easily checkmate on the dark squares. Don't forget to create a threat with every move that you make. Otherwise your opponent might try to defend and he has plenty of extra things. So if he defends, you're also risking to lose. One more defense is the move f6 in this situation, but then this square has been opened. Now we are attacking not only on the files, but we can use the diagonals. Don't forget about this one too. Only move to stop the checkmate is this one, but then this is also a familiar line where we are capturing the bishop on e7 and we are delivering checkmate. Finally, if b5, to try to block this bishop, we have again same old rook e7, king e7, queen e4 check, king f6 and g4. We have seen this line, we know what happens on queen e5. And we also know what happens in case of g5 check and check and then we are bringing the king back. I forgot to mention that in this line, if they try to escape on d6, we have plenty of ways of winning this bishop f4 being the simplest way we capture the queen on c7 and after that we are going to capture some more things for instance this rook on h8 there are other ways to win this don't be shy of trying to find checkmate as well 
but I'm just demonstrating to you the simplest ways of winning this. Finally, King D8, which was played in the game, well, it's replied the same old rook takes e7, and after king e7, we know what happens. Actually, this is the way that the game went. I just want to mention that there was no defense because if f6, bishop f4 is the simplest deflection, and for a change, let's give a checkmate on d7 or on f7, depending on where this king goes, or if he captures on d7, queen takes d7. So far, we have been giving checkmates on the dark diagonal here and on the e-file now we are using the d file and you can see that pretty much every central file and diagonal can be used in our attack if the queen goes on b6 in this situation then rook takes d7 is again checkmate and if b5 bishop g5 is loading the gun this covered attack when the game can finish in a familiar way double check he has nowhere to go but here and then checkmate on f7 Finally, let's see king e7, which was played in the game, and then check if king f6 g4, the little soldier is coming, and invite everyone to the party, then check, check, one more check, if the king goes on the g file, this checkmate, and if the king comes back, we know what happens, just this check, and this beautiful checkmate, and this is how the game should end, actually, Black resigned after the bishop h6. He didn't give a chance to his opponent to finish the game in the most beautiful way, the way that he deserved. But we can appreciate the beauty, the beauty and the power of white's attack. Now, to summarize the things that you need to know about the king being in the center, how to attack it, follow the three simple principles by Morphe. So just develop your pieces, bring them out. Then after you develop the pieces, seize the center from the center it's much easier to attack on either side of the board and last but not least open files when your more active pieces will do the big difference will show the big difference and again don't forget that black even though is up in material he is usually not able of making use of his rooks his extra rooks they're just sitting there looking at what's going on see you next time